stole a lot of gold uh, from Steve uh, Quayle. Hey, you, just, you stole the thunder, damn it. Oh, man, I was going there, Gwen, but you did it. Exactly it all right. The, all the people that want you to buy silver and gold are all the people who are selling it. Yeah, but, but even you so. You can't eat it. If there's a, <laughs> you can't eat it, that's right, but if there's a hundred, if there's a hundred thousand uh, Chinese people at the Mexican border with troops or whatever, first of all, I would have to say that there would be a lot more footage of that at somewhere, somehow, some way. Uh, if the Wouldn't New Madrid's go, if, it, well, if the New Madrid, if you'd think so, you know, Chinese in Mexico? I don't know. And then, and then of course, we got, uh, and then, of course, we got the FEMA getting ready for New Madrid. Well, if New Madrid goes off, I sure as hell hope FEMA's getting ready for something. And, uh, you know, hopefully they may do something decent. Doubt it. But if that was the case, okay. And uh, uh, gun control? This has been a, a thing going now for the last 20 years. And the United States is the last bastion on earth of guns. That's it. You know, uh, well, it was Admiral Yamamoto that told the emperor, I wouldn't attack the United States mainland if I were you because there's a gun behind every blade of grass. Well, you know, that's why they did that Fast and Furious. Uh, it was a national defense. They sold mm -hmm. all those guns to the drug cartels so that they could kill the Chinese in Mexico before they crossed the border. I'm certain of it. Yeah. No, I, hey, I know what the agenda is really about. There's a treaty right now, a, a, a UN treaty, that uh, Obama wants the Senate to ratify, and if they ratify it, it puts us under international gun control and say goodbye to the Second Amendment. And here's the thing that I find very interesting, is that we have the power, as it stands right now, so that if something like that was to happen, uh, we have the power to say, oh, hell no. We have the power right now if we wanted to. The problem is people don't have enough. They haven't lost enough yet. I've lost enough. That's why I'm on the radio three nights a week barking like a dog. I've lost plenty. And I'll tell you what, to get my country back to a state that it should be in, I'd lose a lot more. I gave away six years of my life it, defending the constitutional rights of Americans abroad. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing for six years in the military. Well, no, the enemy is flooding across our southern border. Here we go. This, the, here, let me give you the news flash, folks. There, the, this, this new world order elitist beast that controls, that controls the military, they're the enemy. How would you feel tomorrow if the Chinese, the 100,000 Chinese that are amassing on our border, invaded and took us over? And they came by, and they're like, hey, man, you know, that yeah, property you got right there, we like it. We want to grow rice there. We're going we're gonna to do it. How would you feel if they came and said, no, that's our house now? What would you, you do? Know, do you know what would happen? A lot of people would become gainfully employed because the first thing the Chinese would do would be to uh, set up uh, sweatshops and employ Americans. Yeah, okay, right. But I'm saying that what would you do? I mean, I'm sure there's people out there crazy enough to strap bombs around their chest and go and run themselves into a Chinese embankment of soldiers and blow themselves up or whatever. Sure, of course there are. I guess that would be an extremist. Yeah. Well, you see, well, who's, who's the terrorist, John? Who's the real well, terrorist? That's my question. Stupidity is just nature's way of cleaning the gene pool. But, I mean, who's the real terrorist? Is it, is it the people in, in the Middle East that strap bombs around themselves and go and blow themselves up? Yeah, they probably have nothing to lose, and that's what they feel their only option is. And, and I got news for you. Th they weren't doing that when we weren't getting in the way. They weren't blowing themselves up and everything. They were fighting amongst each other. Because well, they, can't you know, get, they can't seem to see eye to eye on a lot of things. But let me tell you something. It wasn't against the United States. Well, you know, let, uh, let something happen inside the United States, whether it be man-made or natural, and bring the blue hats from the U.N. over here or some foreign uh, military over here to uh, stand guard and keep the peace or whatever moniker you want to put on uh, or title that you, you want to give, give, uh, give this action, so to speak. And... Uh, 
let things get desperate. Let them uh, shoot the women and children. Let them rape American women. Let them blow up schools and houses and churches and mosques. And we'll see how fast a few of these people in this country won't strap a couple uh, bombs to their chest and walk into uh, a, a group of them and, and push the button. But that's uh, my point. The, the word terrorist is being thrown around here quite loosely. And uh, they've, they've also claimed that the founders of this country were terrorists. Well, right. that just depends on the, which side of the fence you're sitting on. Are you sitting on the globalist side? If that's the case, then John King's a terrorist because John King is a gun-toting, freedom-loving constitutionalist. If you're a gun-toting, freedom-loving constitutionalist, then the globalists and the New World Order are the terrorists. So it all depends on where you sit. It is true. It's it's all relative, I guess you could say. Hey, Gwen, who's our uh, guest for Tuesday night? Neil Bigelow. He is former U.S. Army, uh, worked for the State Department, currently employed at PSETI, and attended University of Maryland College Park. Uh, you know, he's left-wing, right, uh, right-wing, chicken-wing, you know. So uh, he's going to come on. He's going to talk about some of his um, contacts and information with the globalists and uh, prepping. And what we're really looking at uh, as the real threat and not the fake, uh, made-up, fear-mongering threats that we're hearing about on the lamestream media. Join us. That's fantastic. And, yes, Tuesday and Thursday we are going to two hours, so we'll be on from 10P to 12A, Tuesday and Thursday. That's 10P to 12A Eastern, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, of course, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. One thing, guys, to look at is the uh, tensions flaring in Egypt uh, with them storming the Israeli embassy. Uh, I don't know what could come of that. Just pay close attention to that situation because that has the potential to flare up. And um, God only knows what will happen then. I mean, you're going to see the YouTube community and and all the um, tinfoil hatters just go absolutely bat crap crazy over uh, uh, this uh, Egypt-Israel thing. And, you know, it's so just be aware that that's going on and what it can do to the cost of oil should things uh, uh, flare up there. And uh, just prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. You know what's interesting, guys? Uh, today at the pump, I paid three thirty nine, And the uh, price per barrel is, is about $84, $85 a barrel. And I just don't see the price going down proportionately to where it was. Because I think it remember it topped out at like, uh, 450 or something like that. Four, four to 450 during the uh, last spike when it was 150 dollars a barrel, and I just I'm not I'm not seeing it now. That the proportion, it's like they're charging a lot more for less. Wait, that's inflation. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Guys, you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I was playing yeah. World of Warcraft on my iPod. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm one of the fortunate people that get to pay $3.39 a gallon. I feel so good. Oh, I feel so good that I'm getting Three, robbed. $3.65 here, and my sphincter is throbbing. Yeah, yeah. My my sphincter throbs at $2 a gallon, let alone three thirty nine. You know, uh, but that's that's just it, folks. You have to understand that this is all part of an agenda, and it, it's not about tinfoil hatting or anything else. It's just about paying attention. Pay attention and make change where you can affect it, and that's in individuals. You're not going to sway the masses at this point, folks. Uh, the party's over for that. Now it's about individuals. So plant the seeds that hopefully grow into that nice, happy tree that John was talking about planting earlier. Any parting thoughts, guys, as we wrap up tonight? Yes, go out and fearmonger everywhere and see how good it feels <laughs> and call things by their real name. We do not have a government. We have a corporation. They're criminals. And they told the military to stand down and caused all of the 
lack of freedom that we have. Have a wonderful week in paradise. Yep. And in, in parting, I've got to say that uh, when you're out there and you're talking about 9-11 was an inside job, don't forget to tell them about those aliens that are coming to shove that anal probe up their rear end so that they look at you like you've got horns growing out of your head. Good morning, everybody. I refuse to say good night or goodbye, so I'm just going to leave you with good morning. Well, on behalf of John King and Gwen Caldwell, I'm Joe Joseph. Thank you for listening to this, uh, this broadcast. Next broadcast, Tuesday, from 10p to 12a Eastern. Have a great night. Can't make a